using one or the other or in certain scenarios. Appreciate that. So, uh, and that speaks to the difference between the T and the casting. So the castings, um, the castings by definition are the excrement of the worms. That's what we harvest after the worms have eaten their food. And the process for making the castings is a long one because, because we're certified organic, we use composted green waste only to feed the worms. And that green waste has to be composted thermophilically for six months. And then we feed it to the worm beds for six months. And then we harvest the castings. And then we stockpile the castings for a minimum of two years before we use them. And that's a key thing. That's, that's one of the things that makes the Vermisterra castings so different is the age. Because when you age, all of the food gets digested. There's no unfinished food in the casting. And so pound for pound, what you get on each particle that is teeming with biology, you get more of it, pound for pound. So the aged worm castings is uh, significantly more valuable. And it's necessary for making the kind of tea that we do that has the same biology represented on the castings just blown up into bigger numbers. So the way to think about using the tea in castings, one is that the, the castings are slow release. So the biology on the castings and in the tea, they're both dormant. The castings can be um, put in the hole when you plant. They can be top dressed. They won't ever wear out, dry out, go bad. They just keep releasing their uh, the bacteria that uh, makes it what it is, they just keep releasing that over time. So if you put a pound of castings around a plant in six months, it is still giving up biology. So think of it as a slow release biological system. It also has um, significant uh, minor element nutrition. So the, cast, the castings have, you know, because they came from, what they came from, the, uh, the plants that were composted, the minerals from those plants get um, concentrated in the castings, particularly micronutrients. So they do have some mineral value. The tea is made by taking some of the castings to get a start on the biology and then feeding it to make it grow. So it doesn't have the mineral content that the castings do, but it has an order of magnitude higher number of those bacteria and fungi per unit of volume. So this isn't, uh, this isn't accurate, but let's say the castings have um, a uh, hundred bacteria for every gram. It's, it's probably more, it's yeah. a lot higher than that. Yeah. But the tea would have 10 million. Yeah. So it's the, it's the beauty of logarithmic growth of bacteria is that you can get a lot of bacteria really fast. The, the key for us, and what makes the Vermisterra different than any other tea, is that we have brewed it uh, completely into the stationary phase and allowed those bacteria to go dormant right at the time when they've run out of food, which makes the tea stable. That means we can store it. We can store it two years as long as we don't allow any air into it. That's a, that's a big question people have, like how is this different than compost tea? Yeah, compost tea is fresh, which means You've got a window, usually a, a matter of hours or a few days, before that tea changes into something else because those bacteria are live and growing. And what grows out of that mix isn't always what you wanted or what you started with. So it's not that compost tea has no value or worm compost tea made like that has no value. It's just different and it has a short time frame which makes it commercially in my opinion not viable because I can't store it, I can't ship it, I can't do large volume. We can do and often do truckloads of tea because we use it on a commercial scale, it's stable, it is 
of higher titer than anything else out there. It is a unique pro product in the world. And what do you say is the difference between the tea and the casting clay? Do you like one better? Do you use them together first? Thank Maybe you for coming back around to that. Yeah. So, um, the the tea will do the job of the castings for the most part. The castings will do some of the job of the tea, but it's uh, you, you can think of it as a numbers game, depending on what you're trying to accomplish and how fast you want it to happen. If you've got pressure and you want to alleviate that pressure, let's say, of something bad, salts, organisms that are going to attack your plants, then the tea gets it done faster. The castings continue to address the problem. So I will often use them in, in conjunction, sometimes in tandem. Um, I like to, when planting permanent crops, to put castings in the hole or top dress the trees because it, as I talked about earlier, it resets the biological playing field. Uh, I use the tea um, more because of its convenience and its power. So the convenience is you can run it in your irrigation system. We run it through drip lines and it actually, this is one of those side benefits, it actually cleans the drip lines from hard water deposits and from algae growing in it. And the hard water deposits because it's relatively acidic. The algae just because it outcompetes the algae for the food source. And so it just keeps lines clean. And it's easy. It's it's just dead easy to use. So you can you can inject it slow. You can push it in fast because it's a live product. It moves with the water in the soil, so it doesn't have to be pushed down. It doesn't have to be handled a certain way. Just get it out there. Any way you can get it on, it'll work. So. Well, how do you find Vermisera different than any other products that you use? Like uh, people say, like, well, there's there's a lot of earthworm castings out there. So the Vermisteria casting, the castings are different because of their age and the, the relative volume of unfinished food right. in, in normal castings and what we have. And so what we have is unique in the world because number one, it's aged for a couple of years and then we screen it and take out the smallest, finest portion which is pound for pound more biologically active. So that's, that's different. Um, not all worm castings are certifiable, certifiable organic because they use manure as a food source, and we don't. Our tea is, com uh, I'll just say it's totally unique. Um, most worm compost tea is either a uh, filtered concentrate from a leachate. A leachate means you run water through the castings, collect what's left, and then if you dry it down or concentrate it, you've got a liquid form, and it has some good stuff in it. But it's different than brewing a tea using the castings as the biological starting material and having that population uh, explode in uniformity and then become stable. And that's what the Vermisterra is, is and, what, and what makes it different. So it's first, um, it's started from aged worm castings. And if you don't start with that, you don't get a uniform population because you have unfinished food in there and the bacterial population does some weird stuff. So it's, it's made from something unique. Secondly, uh, we brew it in such a way that we have an order of magnitude higher, tighter. Uh, that's the number of bacteria per uh, unit of volume than anything else. Uh, number three, it's stable. So because the way we brew it and how we stop it, we can stop it at the life cycle of that bacterial batch, uh, the bacteria go dormant.